Chad. I love firsts. Anyone else like to be first in something? This is the this is well you're you're this is the first time in my life that I've spoken inside a church on the last Sunday of the year. <laughs> so when, when I started my church in San Juan Capistrano, I would preach 51 Sundays a year. And guess which Sunday I wouldn't preach? You know, you got it. And the only reason I preached that much is because when I was at Rancho Capistrano, every Sunday I took off, guess where I went? I went up to the Christ Cathedral and I'd preach up there. <laughs> so then the last Sunday of the year, it's like, that's it. I've done 51. I'm done. I'm taking it off, period. And I'd spend that Sunday and we'd go someplace. I don't know where, but I, that was our family time. And so then I came up, then when I left Ranch Capistrano in 2000, my mother, some of you may remember my mother, some of you know Arvella, yeah, wonderful, beautiful, sweet, nice little lady. Well, that nice, sweet part, and that might be the best way to define her, even though most people would see her that way. She was a tough bird is what she was. <laughs> and she had a way of getting her way. Those of you who worked with her know what I'm talking about. And so guess what she did for the next 10 years with me? She tried to get me to preach on the last Sunday of the year, and I never did it. So here I am, finally. Okay, Lord, I got the picture. So here I am. <laughs> I wasn't looking for an applause on that, but I'll take it anyway. I'll take it every single chance I get. But, uh, you know, Don and I have traveled around the world since then, and we spend more days out of the United States than we do in it, I think. I haven't actually calculated, but it's close. And we have been, like you said, all over the world. We've been to Asia several times. Uh, we've been to the Philippines, uh, you, you name it. We've been all over the place, Mongolia, Africa, South America. And what we're doing is we're sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with everybody we can, everywhere around the world. And we are doing whatever God calls us to do to cr try and create a better world, a world of peace. Well, tonight, this morning, what I want to do is... If I can accomplish my goal, you're going to leave here today humming a tune. You ever get a, a tune stuck in your head? You can't stop singing it. You just sing it over and over and over again. I've got to get this tune out of my head. You know what I'm talking about? It could be something really stupid. And you can't get it out of your head. You go, I don't want to hear this tune in my head anymore. And it's just stuck in there. Well, today, if I succeed, you will leave here and you'll spend this week, or better yet, think of it this way, the decade. This is the last Sunday, not only of the year, but the decade. That's pretty cool. You guys are the cool ones. You are here this morning on the last Sunday of the decade. And so when you leave here this morning, I want you to be humming this tune in your head. And throughout the week and through the roaring 20s. Okay? There is power in the name of Jesus. You think you can remember that? It's a hard one, isn't it? There's power in the name of Jesus. That's all you have to remember. That's all I've been singing in my head for the last weeks. Weeks. And if you're going to have something stuck in your head, that's a good one to have in there. Now we'll sing it with me. There is power in the name of Jesus. Let's do it again because some of you are a little slow there. There is power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. 
It's easy to forget where our power comes from. Society will say it comes from everything else, but <laughs> rarely do you hear them say, there's power in the name of Jesus. And yet that's where all true power comes from. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And everything that has ever been created was created from this Word. And this week, we celebrated the Word becoming flesh. Amen. The Word became flesh, and He dwelt among us full of grace and truth. Did you hear that? Truth. There is power in the name of Jesus. There's power. Today we celebrate a communion. You know, it's a celebration is what it is. It's a celebration of the time that God overcame the most powerful army, the most powerful nation, the most powerful human being on planet Earth. Pharaoh himself. And God conquered him. Nobody else did. God did. Moses came to Pharaoh and said, let my people go. And of course, he says no, right? So he comes back again and says, let my people go. And of course, he says no. And a third time. And a fourth time. How many times... You get the door slammed in your face and somebody says no to you, do you go back? Two, three, four times? Moses went back 10 times. Can you imagine that? 10 times? It's like, come on God, I've been to him five times already. He said no. What, what makes you think he's gonna say yes this time? Can you imagine that conversation of Moses with God? And yet it goes 10 times. It took 10 times for God to take the shackles off of the hands and the feet of the Israelites and give them the freedom. And that's what we were celebrating this morning. This is the feast of the Passover. The Passover representing the, the angel of death who came and passed over the houses that had put the blood of the lamb on the doorposts of their homes. And they celebrate that. And Jesus was celebrating that with his apostles. And that's what we celebrated today. The breaking of chains is what we celebrated. The breaking of chains. <laughs> there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Did you hear me? The power of Jesus can break any and every chain. So the Israelites are free, fine and dandy. This is cool. Now I get to go live in the wilderness for 40 years. I mean, it's, the, it's the, one of the more, most tragic stories in the world, 40, 40 years. I wanna add an adjective to that, but it's not appropriate. 40, I'm gonna say it, flipping years. 40 flipping years in the wilderness. Moses thought, well, maybe we can get out of here in 20. So 20 years after being in the wilderness, they go and they cross the wilderness and 10 spies come back and two of them says, we can take these guys. Come on, Moses, let's go get them. And the others, oh, no, 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 no. They're giants over there. They've got everything. They've got this. There's no way we could do it. So what happens? Back in the wilderness, another 
20 years. Why? The chains had fallen off their hands and their wrists, but had never fallen out of their minds. They still suffered from slave mentality. And what we need to do today is discover that through the power of Jesus, we can break through the chains that are holding us back. We don't have to live in slavery and in fear. St. Paul was at the stoning of St. Stephen, the first Christian martyr. And tradition says that they threw Stephen's garments at his feet. And then he was on his way to Damascus to gather up the rest of the Christians who might be propagating this this movement that there's power in the name of Jesus. And on the way there, Jesus himself strikes him down and says, Paul, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And from there, Saul became the apostle of of God (laughs) and went around the world sharing with the world the good news and the power of Jesus to change lives, to break chains. The most important ones, the chains that hold us back, are negative thinking that keeps us from experiencing the presence of the Holy Spirit of God himself. Here's what St. Paul said as he's waiting trial. This is a trial that will lead to his death and execution. He's writing to his disciple Timothy and he says this. God has not given you the spirit of fear but of power and love and a sound mind. God has not given you the spirit of fear. (laughs) Which then just bids the question, well, where does it come from then? And, and a lot of Christians immediately will say, oh, it comes, from, it comes from the devil. Right? And maybe it does. Originally, because we were a long ways from the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden, we didn't need any fear. We didn't have to worry about lions and tigers and bears. Oh my, lion and tigers and bears. We don't have to worry about those anymore. In the garden, you didn't have to worry about those. But once we left the garden, oh my, there are lions and tigers and bears. And fear became an important survival instinct for us to be able to exist as a human race. But yet now that we don't have to worry about lions and tigers and bears, anyone here have to worry about lions and tigers and bears? No. No, so, but what do we worry about instead? Well, I have enough money to make my, my rent. Worry about the diagnosis that I got last week. Worry about my children. Worry about, do I have enough to get through college? Do I have enough to get a wife or a husband? Do I have enough... Do I have enough? Do I have enough? And these worries and these fears just penetrate our minds. And St. Paul comes right out and he says, God has not given you this spirit of fear. There is power 
in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Can you hear that tune? There's power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, to break the chains that are within our minds, enslaving us in worry, in doubt, in not enoughness, in humiliation. And a lot of people want to give credit to Satan for this, but Satan is a finite creature. He does not have enough power to create as much fear as he creates in this room, let alone in every single human being around this planet. He is not that powerful. He only creates the illusion of having that much power because he is a liar. And he will create an illusion of being strong and powerful. And so what do we do? We, we give him his power by saying, the devil made me do it. That's satanic. I believe that there is a devil. I believe that there is a Satan. I believe that he is very limited in his power. Because there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. You hear me? There is power in the name of Jesus to break every fear. God has not given you a spirit of fear. But a spirit of power. and love and a sound mind. Since leaving the cathedral, Don and I have traveled a lot. Last year we were in Uganda. Uganda's in the middle of Africa on the equator. And I got an invitation to speak and I'm going, oh, oh that's wonderful, I'll go and preach. And then I get the invitation and they said, we'll pick you up on Thursday night at 10 p.m. I'm going, oh, yeah, right. Okay, there's, there's a typo here. There's something wrong. This is Thursday, they're going to pick me up on 10 p.m. on a Thursday night. So I, I double-checked, and no, it's not a, not a typo. We'll pick you up 10 p.m. Thursday night. So Donna says, no, I'm going to bed. I can't stay up that late. This is by the time I get there, it's the middle of the night. So a car comes and picks me up at 10 p.m. And we're driving through the streets of Kinshasa at night. The smells, the honking, the, the, uh, the, the, I mean, it's just an amazing, wild, crazy place we're driving through. And the car breaks down. It doesn't take long. And another car comes and picks us up. And we keep going. We get there by 11 o'clock. We arrive at the church and everything's dark. And I'm going, of course it's dark. It's 11 o'clock. What do you expect? And they lead me into, a, into one, a one little room. And I'm sitting there. And the pastor comes out and he says, I, I'm so sorry that, that everything is so dark. But we're remodeling the church. That's why it's dark. So we're going to be meeting outside. And I'm going, outside, it's raining. This is really good. Okay, we're going to be meeting outside. It's raining. It's now 11 o'clock at night. By the time I'm up there, it's 12 o'clock at night. Uh, are you kidding me? <laughs> so we walk around the church, and all of a sudden I hear the music. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. And the music just starts swelling. And it gets bigger and it gets bigger. And I turn around the corner. 
And there had to be 5,000 people. 5,000 people at midnight worshiping and praising God and singing, there is power in the name of Jesus. Because there is. There is. And I said, what time do these guys start? I thought he was going to say 9 o'clock or maybe as early as 6 o'clock. And, and so I asked them, do they start, what time did they start today? Oh, they didn't start today. What? Did they, I'm thinking to myself, yesterday? No, they didn't start yesterday. Did they start a week ago? No, they didn't start a week ago. Nine seasons ago. Winter, summer, spring, fall, winter, summer, spring, fall, winter. Over two years. They started over two years ago and they haven't stopped. And to my, and I bet my bottom dollar, they're still worshiping God today. That's power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Because God has not given them a spirit of fear. But power and love and a sound mind. Many of you have probably seen a scene in a movie that, that looks like this. Anyone ever see a war movie? I don't think you can see a war movie and not see this scene. A bunch of veterans just getting out of battle, sitting around a fire, sitting around in a circle, and you can see they're scarred. Not necessarily on their faces, but you can see their hairs. You can see it in their eyes. You can see it in their countenance. You can see it in their heart. You can see the way they carry themselves. They're tough. They've been tried. They've gone through the fires. They've gone through the battles. They've gone through the challenges. They've gone through the struggles. And they've come out the other side. They're veterans. Right? And then what happens next in the scene? Some young punk, all fresh out of school, just with his new uniform and his shiny, shiny new gun, comes walking into the scene, right? You, how many of you have seen a scene like that in a movie? You know exactly what I'm talking about, right? What is the difference between the rookie and the, and the veterans? The veterans have character. You don't get character by reading a book. You don't get character by being the nice guy and sitting behind the desk and doing this and that. You get character by going through the flames, going through the fires, going through the wilderness. And God doesn't care how long it takes. He'll keep you in the wilderness until you're ready. He'll keep you in the wilderness until you are prepared to be the man and the woman that he has called you to be. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. He's raising up an army. Isn't he? He's raising up an army of people who are going to make a difference in the world. And that's what Christianity is all about. I've traveled the world. I've seen an army of veterans who've been through the fires, who've been through the storms, who've been through the struggles that life offers. Because if you, when you become a Christian, it doesn't mean you're just going to be able to have a nice bank account. Hey, 
Now I'm, go now I'm good. I'm going to have all the prosperity that, that I heard about. God's going to take you through the fires. He's going to test you. That's what Christianity is about. Is this person ready to be on my team? And he wants the best and the brightest and the strongest. And it starts with an understanding of breaking through our fear barriers, breaking through the slave mentality, breaking through the fear that God's not going to see us through and coming to the realization that through the power of God, we can do all things. And so you look at the hospitals that have been built through Christian funds. Look at the schools that have been built through Christian funds. Look at the churches that have been built. Look at the orphanages. Did you hear the announcements today? We're dealing with human trafficking here in this country in the United States of America to break the chains of slavery that is taking place right here in Orange County, California, Irvine. It's Christian organizations that are leading these charges. It's people who have been called and empowered, but not just empowered, empowered. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but power with love. Think about that, with love, because without love, power is vile. Pile, power just becomes dictatorships. Power just becomes a use of personal gain and satisfaction. Power with love. Agape love. You know, there's the three forms of love, eros, philos, and agape. Eros, of course, where we get the word erotic, it's sexual love. Philos, we get the word Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. And then, of course, agape, Christian love. You know how they translate that in a lot of translations? Charity. That's what Christian love is all about. That's what we do. That's what the church is called to do, to make a difference in the world, to feed the hungry, to care for those who are less fortunate, to bind the wounds, to give hope to the hopeless. I don't know what your fears are today, but this I know, that there is power in the name of Jesus to conquer every fear, to destroy every mountain, bridge every river, cross every valley, and you can be victorious in the name of Jesus today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Dear God, we thank you that you allowed your world and your word to be here in us and with us today. Your word became flesh. We might know Jesus. And so we call upon you, O oh Lord. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord grant you his peace. And you're lying down and you're rising up and you're laboring in your leisure, in your laughter and in your tears. Until you come. 
to stand before Jesus in that day in which there is no sunset and no dawning. Amen. Happy New Year, everybody.